What's going on, y'all? It's your boy Jordan Coleman, also known as J.O. And I'm here with Chris Gotti and Don De Niro, and we're giving them the business. You know the podcast. And we're back once again, you heard? This is Chris Gotti, Lorenzo, Don De Niro, my partner. You already know, Mr. Money for the Gringo. And this is giving him the business, you heard? Don't forget to like, subscribe, go to our YouTube channel. It, um, please. Leave hey, a comment. Hey, don't forget, we got our merch. Go yeah. get the merch. Go, go, hey, go to adventuresmusic.com and get the merch. Get the merch. You always merch know we have fire. Connection 717. Yes. It's the merch. And uh, the merch. again, thank y'all for your support. and uh, All the support. And we don't stop. I mean, that last episode we did, uh, I think that's out. That's kind of really buzzing is um, <clears throat> the situation with uh, Jay Prince. And, and, you know, I think that was Shout something dope. It's crucial. Yeah, Jay. Giving me that interview. Definitely. But now here we are. Yes. Yeah. Another again, again, this this guest we have today, it fits exactly into what we do here with uh empowering independent artists, helping them sharpen their tools by coming and doing interviews and doing things. But he's he also done other things aside from being an independent artist, and that's what we're gonna talk about as well. And I just want everyone to give it up for Jordan Coleman. Let's go. Let's yeah. Oh, man, Jordan, appreciate you. Yeah, appreciate you coming through. Last yeah. night we was hooping, so I know, yeah. you know, is the body feeling yeah. all right? I'm feeling good, you know. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm still <laughs> fucking with the young boys. Yeah, yeah, yeah Chris. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Tim Duncan style, man. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, I appreciate you pulling up. You know what I'm saying? I know you got work to do with uh, mixing your records and everything like that. But I want to start. I want to really give the the audience an insight on a few things. One being an independent artist. Sure. So, where would you like? To where start? did you? I will. I'm gonna go further back because I believe you started as a writer first before you really became an artist. Is that right? So I actually started off as a voice actor, before that all started. Okay. And um, I, I, that started with Nickelodeon. It was this uh, show called The Backyard Again. And I was Tyrone the Moose on the backyard again. <laughs> Tyrone the Moose. Yeah, 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 yeah. It was pretty cool. But um, but uh, real quick, I I know I know because I feel some got fast forward till you just jumped in. The, what got that's you? That's where you started. Right, yeah, I know. But my question is, yeah. when it's I always look for the inspiration. Yeah. You know, we get guided, right? With basketball, you were like, hey, I went in when you came in, and you was like, oh, if Jordan's on the wall, good yeah, decision. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So I real quick, so. What kind of, that Nick, how old were you when you did the Nickelodeon? Uh, I started when I was 10 years old. The 10, right? Wow. Yeah. So what gives you the itch when you were watching TV to say, I want to I want to be part of kind of that, I'm not afraid? Because there's a lot of, to, for you at 10 to go, you wasn't yeah, scared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah. And, yeah. and you know, when I hear someone at 10, was it your... Oh, could have been mom or dad? Oh, that's you. That's true. Yeah. Pulling. Oh, cool. That's kind of what we're going to get to, yeah, to figure yeah. out how'd you cool. get there. Okay. You you know what it is. The parents want the best for you, right. and they they see what you're good at. They see what you're not good at, yeah. and they. Well, you always acting at home. You were always you doing know, things. Was always like a you know full of energy, energetic person. But I was into sports. Heavy, okay, you know? so I was a ball player. You know, okay. I was playing soccer, baseball, did the karate and all so, that. I went off and uh, played rugby in college, but it was like rugby. Yeah, 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 oh. Yeah. Okay. So competition, no, rugby's a sport, sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. For real, so I was busy, yeah. like, into sports, but my parents were like, you're not going off and being an athlete. Saying, so, like, I, I I, wanted to be a football player, ultimately. Did you play rugby in this country? Yeah, yeah, I played at American University. Oh, okay. D.C. Yeah, I know no, D.C., American University. I yeah. believe. Yeah. Don't Did you play rugby in high school? Nah, I played football. Oh, okay. I believe my nephew's in Winter American. Right? Yeah, shout out to Tyler. Shout out Tyler. Go, go. If I'm not mistaken, I could go, but I know he was in D.C. and I believe he was American. I hear that. Oh, that's what's up. So, yeah. yeah great uh, school. Yeah, I've always been sports-driven. And um, they were just like, you need to find a different avenue because, you know, you, your friends, and everyone else is trying to be an athlete. Um, they they pushed me into more of like the entertainment world, Dope. and uh, I started off doing all these auditions, and I hated that shit because it would take me away from practice, <laughs> and um, it it was just one of those situations where you just got to listen to your parents, and I remember <laughs> like I would just be on a couple of different auditions, like for uh, Everybody Hates Chris, I was on one audition for Dope. for that show to be like Surprise. her brother Drew, okay, and uh, I remember just like going in there doing my thing. 
thinking I got it, and I come out, like go home. Drew was his brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ten weeks later, you see the other dude on TV. Oh. He's just like, yo, like I don't even want to do this no more. Right, right, right. Sat in traffic to come here. Right. I ain't eat no lunch. The part, the part of rejection, right? Yeah, the part yeah, that took it to spot. It got real, and like, uh, you know, <laughs> my mom was always one of those people. Shout out to Mom Dukes. That was just like, you know, if you want something, you got to work hard at it. Simple as that. And so um, she was like, just try for this one last show called The Backyard Against. And like we bought every episode for that season one. That's a cartoon. Yeah, yeah, it's a cartoon. And um, we watched it. And I was just able to like study the character. And then when I went into, it was like a, a national wide search. So they narrowed it down to like being another kid. I, I was just so prepared and so confident going into it. I just treated it like it was a sport. And how old were you at this time? I was 10. Wow. When I think about that, I think about what we say with Dex, the five Ps. Proper preparation prevents a poor performance. Well, sure. Puff, puff, pass, please, Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> you know how you say that? Oh, it's crazy <laughs> how you say <laughs> that. <laughs> when I born from old, Bobby. <laughs> your parents <laughs> say find something else. You know, my youngest son, he's at Wagner, which is his double liberal yeah, art yeah, school. Yeah, yeah. And they do uh, have a lot of people at Wagner that, that are actors on Broadway and everything else. So I tell Prince, listen, they're giving you're giving up your body to get an education. Do me a favor and get an effing education and try to get some acting, right? And I'm not doing, you know, Prince is always no. Ah. Z tells me the other day, oh, he didn't tell you he was taking acting classes because of the girls, right? Yeah. And he's yeah. doing it. He knows his play and his word, right? Yeah. So I felt excited. I said, I know why he's not going to tell me because he, he's going to, I'm right again. But at, when you say that, it's kind of, I mean, you know, we, we pride ourselves on being dads. Like, that's our yes. thing. That's everything else is secondary. But the irony is that we notice that our kids are listening to us even when they're not listening to no, us. No, they're listening to us all the, all time. the time. And the kids are going to do what you do, not what you say. So I was kind of happy because he has communication with his big brother and he told him that. And when I listen to you say that, yeah. I can imagine your parents saying, let's not put all the eggs in one basket. Yeah, sure. That's, and look, and it's working out because the athletic aspect of it will never lose. Right. The, the, the part of competing, mm -hmm. you'll never feel that camaraderie with the teammates again, yeah, right? Yeah, it's, different. That, it's different. It's like I tell my, I tell my kids, yeah, your football that. team or your rugby team, that's your game. Yeah, sure. You got your colors, yeah, you bang out every fucking <laughs> Friday or Saturday night, yeah, yeah, yeah. you get out your system, yeah. that's your team. You know what I'm saying? So when I see that, man, I commend you and your parents because I think it works hand in hand with competition and education and all that yeah. rounds off a better man. Because Chris played sure. football. I think that that part of it, oh, you know, when I see people who don't compete, mm -hmm. it's like they lost something in their lives when, as they're growing up. There's a part that you have to learn how to lose. Yeah, 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 Remember when you, yeah, yeah, you worked yeah, yeah. all week sure, yeah. in that game and you lost? Yeah, yeah, and you had to show up Monday and practice again? Mm -hmm. I never lost. No, I wouldn't care. Yeah. <laughs> no, listen, there's no one that can probably say, there's some people that can say, hey, they've had an undefeated season in life. Oh, yeah. But you're going to take losses. Yeah. I think that's what sports teaches you how to lose. It's yeah. very important. It prepares you for yes, that, yes, that conflict. Yes, yes, yes. You have to fight yes. that, right. that battle. So so 10 years old, you get this part. Yeah. So, um, And what are you, what's the moose today? What? Tyrone. Tyrone, Tyrone the moose. moose. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you were basically doing uh, uh, the ca the character, and you would just do the the speaking. Aspect. Yeah. Well, what is it? What do they call that? More voiceover. That's a yeah, voiceover. Yeah, voiceover. Okay. okay. But that would come like seeing it on screen. That would come a little bit after. At first, it's just you and a script and a voice coach, and you have to just use your imagination to figure out what the scenes would look like. And um, they would tell you, you know, enunciate your words a little bit more or add a little bit more excitement, you know what I'm saying? Right. But um, it's usually they do it within like uh, an hour and a half, two hours, just so like the kid's attention span isn't too, you know what I'm saying? So um, I, I would go and like, you know, have to leave school early sometimes or like really miss basketball games or baseball games to go do this. And like, I, I look at it now, it's like really a sacrifice that I've made. But well, we talk about this all the time. I'm going to get into that in the show. You have to give something up to get something. Oh, I hear that. Yeah. That's the sacrifice. Welcome to the game of life. Yeah, uh, for real. My, my my homie was asking the other day, he was like, how do you feel like your childhood went? I was like, I felt like it went unchildlike. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it didn't. He, he kind of just took a step back, and I was explaining to him. I'm just like, look, I was missing, like, wreck sports to go to work to go clock in you know sure. what I'm like it's a different kind of just hanging out yeah 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 you know it's a difference and then I, yeah, it's a different program I really. use that it's an to for as an adult yeah. we use the artists right like think I always use big artists like a Michael Jackson right yeah make a child 
He was working this from five years old. This mm -hmm. man was an artist, an entertainer. It was all business. Right, and it was with his family. And then people wonder why he was different. That's why he was different. He didn't get a normal uh, uh, growing up time with his family and, and friends to just to be regular. He was never regular. He was always a scene in the public. And here, 10 years old, that's when your time started and you really, it takes on a different um, trajectory of where you're going. Sure. You know, sure. and it gives you a different insight. But it kind of molds you now. I'm pretty sure you appreciate it um, yeah, you, you now can take a step in hindsight when you come, you know, look back. So you get through uh, Tyrone the yeah, most. Yeah, 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 I did that for about three years. I'm around like 12, 13 years. So you was making money since 10. Yeah, 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 but. Give me a hold or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's the thing. So like, we was making a nice little coin. You're still making money from that residual. Yeah, the residual, shout out to Paramount Plus too. That's it. Yeah, that, that's, oh, that's very important. Digital, digital say, hey, understand. digital expanded the residual aspect of life. Because even in the music business, it changed everything. Yeah. We're not doing these 10x publishing deals if it's not for the digital era yeah. that people are doing right now. So, right, again, it's what we do. We educate because what you did is no different than music right. and having a catalog. That's your catalog. Sure. sure. And acting. And it's sure. the voiceover. And there was a contract that was there. That's the reason you're getting residuals, because inside of that contract, you negotiated for that part. Definitely. Yep. And that's inside of that deal. So that's congratulations to you for that. Appreciate that, for sure. Well, yeah, I, I'm getting all this money. I'm trying to buy sneakers, video games, clothes. Yeah. And my parents are like, you need no. to use something. Use this money to help out your community. I'm like, yo, I'm like 12 years old. What's a community, you know? That's, right, right, right. Right. Damn, one man's a great parent. They should, they, oh, they solid. They be like, that's people. For sure, for sure. Facts. Yep. And so on. Um, My mom and dad didn't know about another. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out, Nimi and Poppy. Yes. No, but they gave, yeah. it, again, again, that just what you're telling me mm -hmm. um, from my own life experience explains that your parents have education or knowledge mm -hmm. in different areas aside from just whatever job they might do. Yeah. See, my mom and dad, my mom was a housewife, my dad was a cab driver. Smartest man ever known, yeah. strongest man ever known, my dad. Yeah, Super smart, but he was a cab driver. He knew something about everything, and you were like, how the hell do you know this shit? shit? He would know yeah. it. And knowledgeable. super knowledgeable. And my mother, was she was the homemaker. She made the home. So they, I always say they couldn't educate me and my brother or anyone in the family on what to do with the money. They you see, you say, yeah. we made all this money. I want to get sneakers. and. They, they had no, they didn't tell us anything. And I think what they did to me was probably the best thing they could have did, which was just say, be careful, take care of yourself, watch, protect yourself. Mm -hmm. That's all they could give us, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, because they didn't have no knowledge on what we did to create the wealth. They never had experience yeah. with any I kind of money that. before that, yeah. where I'm pretty sure your parents might have had some in knowledge or information from someone with things mm -hmm. to start you in that path you was taking right there. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But what I find- That's dope, that's dope. It is dope because what I find interesting is like the whole like uh, like family tree. Because mm -hmm. like you look at it and we was just going back to the root, like where did that come from? Like where did that mindset, where did that work ethic come from? And like I look at my grandparents on mm -hmm. sides and like my grandfather, my side, he didn't know his dad. Right. And like he, his dad was just gone. Right. He didn't want to do no 23 and me or anything like that to figure out his ties. But he still wanted to be like a stand up gentleman, create a foundation for my mom. And like my my grandfather and my, my dad's side, well, both of my grandparents and my dad's side, they're from Alabama, you know? They really had to come together with all the scraps that they were given. Yes. Make something happen in New York City. And, um, you know, it's just one of those situations where like, set a foundation and then like you become like a product or like this like a generational product kind of situation mm -hmm. my grandparents from nashville on my mother's side my oh, okay. father's side was trinidad and philippine wow that's a that's a combination right there yeah but my mother's side is all from the south she yeah. that's true that's just so so yeah no nah, I, I think that um it's all coming to a, a point in time where like um your foundation or like how you were brought up or how you were designed it, it flourishes, whether it's like the negative energy that you see out into the world or it's the positive and creative stuff where people begin ruining your films and stuff like that. So um, I personally, be someone who's young enough to, to change their 
course. I find this time interesting. Mm-hmm. I'm grateful for like my parents and stuff. So, so with, with when you say this time again, let's. You was also a writer, yeah. Not just a voiceover, no, nah, yes. Yeah, actor. What What did you write? And what, you know, talk about the accolades that was received. Right. So we used that money to um make a film, and I I wanted to make a film because I always thought movies were cool, and I had to figure out what was going to be something that was going to affect my community. And I saw how a lot of my friends were really focused on schoolwork. You know, like my folks were the type to give us homework when the teacher didn't give us homework. Mm-hmm. But it was like, why aren't you thinking about school the way I'm thinking about school? kind of thing really just caught up on being this ball player i'm like yo bro like you know we all not gonna make it Uh, i decided to make a film about the importance of education specifically of men of color and um mainly for like my homies because like we would all just sit up and kick back and watch a movie that i made from being a backyard against that was like the whole goal right so then i'm out on like 125th street just and on the street interviews (laughs) Now, this is like 12 year old kid talking to some random stranger who's like a CEO at Sing Sing. And I'm like, yo, like, what, what is this? You know what I'm saying? Like, where am I heading with this whole conversation? And. Wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I, 12 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I was just like telling my mom because she was really hands off this whole situation, kind of like how your mom was hands off. Yes. And I was just like, this is boring. I'm saying, like, this isn't like something that I really want to, to do. She was like, we'll make this exciting. So I'm like, uh, we got to get some celebrities in this. You know what I'm saying? We got to spice it up. My friend's going to be looking at me like, you had all this Tyrone money. You ain't doing nothing that was exciting with it. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? So and she was like, make a list of all the people who you want to, you know, have in your movie. So I'm shooting for the stars, you know, Michael Jordan, Kobe, everybody, bro. And, like, I I have to write them each a letter. And, like, this is the part that, that pissed me off because, like, or in the summertime or the springtime, my friends outside riding bikes and stuff. I'm over here writing a letter like, I I would like for you to be a part of my film. My name is Jordan. Like, I was the voice of a cartoon character and shit like that. And <laughs> yeah, this is the grind. Though. Actually, it, I love it. It is. It is. And I love it. They they would get back to me instantly saying, "Yo, we would love to be a part of the movie because our kids watch your show." So it was kind of like that first full circle. Like, yo, all this work I was doing, when I was paying, watching the show. In the beginning, before I even got the role, and then me missing the games and all that, it paid off. So I'm like, cool. So now we're getting interviews with Vince Carter, and we're getting interviews with uh, Winky Wright, who was my boy back in the day. It's my dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was a solid dude. For sure, it's my dude. Shout out Winky. Yeah, for shout out to Winky. Uh, who else? Uh, we're getting Buster Rhymes. We're getting Ludacris. We're getting. Uh, Young Jock and Jada Kiss, and we getting Kobe Bryant, Michael Strahan, we getting all these different celebrities, and it's like the 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 popularity of the film is increasing. Like, it kind of was like uh, a pivotal moment in my time. It was like, yo, like you really don't have to chase these ball dreams. Like, you really could figure out a different angle in life in a different way. Oh yeah, and it could be cool. You know what I'm saying? And get that money. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So. I kind of just like yeah, you were exposed to something different, and yeah. thanks to your mom, you kind of and that opens you up. That's dope. And today, now uh, you're sitting here because of that yeah. aspect of you know we're not discussing sports. We're dis- we're they are discussing. Yeah. We're discussing your accolades and writing and the other. Yeah, that's dope. Mm-hmm. Sure. And what was the name of the film that was created? It's called Say It Loud. Say It Loud. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And um, AMC sponsored the Seven City Tour across the United States, showing that film. Me and my homies got to travel, you know, South Beach, L.A., all over. Just Dope. like, you know. And how old are you at this time? Uh, I was 13 years old. <laughs> you balling. <laughs> yeah, he's out of here. It's crazy. Yep. And then my freshman year of high school, MTV did a day in the life. And, um, like, it was a show called America's Best Dance Crew. And they did, like, a special episode. Like, all the champions. Super crew. Appawaki. Right. They, like, teamed up with different people things in their community, another full circle. And um, they were able to give money towards their communities and stuff. $10,000 towards my second film, which was Fortunary Tale about teen data violence, like the Chris Brown and Rihanna situation. That was big at the time, you know, like a lot of my friends were you know, either picking sides or just being confused. So decided to make a feature film, a narrative story about it. Just like teen data violence overall, and to bring awareness to it, 
one of those films that won an award from HBO at the Martha's Vineyard Film Festival, the best feature film. Wow. Um, I got accolades from the Motion Picture Association, and I won the Peach Tree International Film Festival down in um, Georgia, Atlanta. Yep. I got to meet Mari Hardwick, and I remember talking to him, <laughs> and this is like before he was ghost, and I was just like, yo, like, I really gave up my football career for this. Yeah. And he was like, yeah, I did the same thing, but trust me, it's going to be going to pay off. going to pay off. To see him in Gridiron Gang and then to see him in that new show, you know, the the video game football show. I was yeah. like, all right, so. Yeah, he's doing his thing. Yeah, he's fine. He tried to kiss Beyonce, though. He pushed <laughs> up a little too hard on B. Oh, I thought Jay might have, you know. <laughs> You know what I mean? Let the Brooklyn out. He'll play it. But he, he, he went a little too far with the B, with the pushing in on B. Yo, you don't do that to B, yo, with Jay right there. Like, <laughs> oh, oh, Wait, well, you're gone too far. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good, man. So you get all of these things that you're still 13 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think that was kind of like, um, like, I think that's the most interesting part of my life because. Once I finish high school, I go off to college, like it kind of hits the reset button. Mm -hmm. And like, I'm back to zero because you go to school. I'm in DC. No one really knows who I am. Mm -hmm. You're brought up. Yeah. Now you're a man. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't really have an offense for myself. So in school and that, in college, did you have that itch or that buzz to want to create movies again and what? And yeah. And were you active during that time or you were just focused on your school? Nah, so during that time, I went to school for film, film and media arts. So I was like making stuff for class, but it wasn't like the stuff that like I really wanted to make. It was just like a stuff you had to make to pass the yeah, yeah, like requirements. You know what I'm saying? Like, or even like with photo I had to take a photography class. I had to be in a dark room and like you had to put the creatively you were restricted, right? Yeah, and yeah, yeah, kind of yeah, you yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's just like I understand technique and I respect tradition. You know, you you pay your dues and do what you have to do, but um. It wasn't, it, it limited me from being able to be as fully creative. So I used, that's why I really, really, really started tapping into like screenwriting and storytelling. Oh, you know? like at first I had to do it to make the movie, but then I started to pick up on interest. And then once I started to do that, like I started to hear different lines rhyme, whether it was the stage directions or like the, the dialogue. So um, it was just like one where I was like, yo, I could really make music out of this. I could really like put music into this. And it was my freshman year of college, and um, my 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 like close friends, they uh, had a microphone in their dorm. That kind of like blew my mind. I'm like, y'all don't need to go nowhere. I could just be right in the spot. So I kept practicing and practicing. I remember like I did Benito Applebaum and my homie, and that was like one, once I got one of those, like I was like, yo, this flow is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like I, it it all like synced in. You know, like it, it told a story. And it was just one of those moments where I was just like, I'm starting something new. You know, like, I don't know how everyone back at home is going to feel about this, but, like, I found something that sparks me the same way that... A creative standpoint. Yeah, 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 like the film stuff did. And so um, I had to practice a lot. And then, you know, you come home, you try little things here and there, and you hear your parents saying, you're not a rapper. You know what I'm saying? You go through all that. I, I just want to say, so I yeah. tell, when we have speaking engagements, I tell most people... Who are young, I'm just like, two things will kill your dream. Yeah. Doubt uh -huh. and your parents. <laughs> because they want you to take the safe route in a weird way. Sure. Yeah. And then she it's crazy how they inspired you to write and do everything and you're actually writing that but yeah. rap yeah, is doing yeah, for sure, for sure. Don't yeah. do that. <laughs> right. Nah, definitely. <laughs> so uh yeah, we had to find a way to make it work and that made me like, you know, look at it from a different angle and I had to be more unique with, with my stuff and make it so that I could f uh, reach different demographics because we grew up in the house and um, it was music, you know, Parliament, Funkadelic. I was just going to ask you, because your parents into music. Yeah, for sure. But like they had a big range and like the hip hop that we would listen to in the house, it was like outcast, you know what I'm saying? Or it was like, like Jay-Z, it was like, um, like the first hip hop song I remember was Hard Knock Life way that it like sampled the any track it kind of like blew my mind because it was like this is hip-hop but it's not really hip-hop because it's like it's a kid's song i believe and it's just like when you hear them really talking you're like oh no this is a hip-hop song so it's just like one of those situations where you see the art in it overall like the different layers of it so i kind of like use that as like 
<laughs> the blueprint for it. And then I started looking at other people. I was like, yo, like, look at Ice Cube. And and I know he, he has, like, a very, very, like, renowned catalog with NWA, but he's also in movies like Friday After Next, or he wrote scripts for Friday After Next. And I think exactly. the aspect of it, because I know Ice Cube's where his brother gets his transition also into film, but I realized that with artists, what I love about film is that every film has a soundtrack. Yeah, so you can, right. you, feel, you can get your music enough. You can do the, you know what I'm saying? If you want to do a movie and drop one record on there, you could. Right. Because, it, so that's, I just wanted to tell you that that's, you know, that's the dope thing about that you can still continue to do your movies and say, well, we're doing a soundtrack. I am. Right. Yeah. And you can get your. That's how I got my parents. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it was. That's yeah. how it is. For sure. Yeah. It was like, yo, your money's not being wasted, and I'm doing what I love. Yeah. Soundtracking my films. Crush them. You cry. That's a crushing. Yeah. <laughs> the character is shit out of that. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. <laughs> Every movie needs music, mom. <laughs> Why should I pay someone else when I can do it? Oh. <laughs> Down <laughs> shit. All right, go back to your room. I'm going to see you in there. you crush them with that. And, that's, and I think that's where movies bring their value if you go in it the way you're going into it. Sure. See, a lot of artists do it. They become, because it's the normal way, really. Like, Pac did his thing and then he got went into movies or whatever. Yeah. Uh, your brother did his thing and now he's into movies. But most people don't do movies and then do they start doing their thing with a rap. But what you could if you just do a, it's still drop an album, but your album could be the soundtrack to the. Imagine that soundtrack takes off with a hot. Well, you know why? Because there's an Oscar and a Grammy. Come on, yeah, Oscar and a Grammy. <laughs> but you know, the reason it's that way is the the film industry really didn't give us the opportunities unless we was already a big star. Right. So if we was a big uh, artist in music, they would give you a chance because it mitigates their risk, so they can make some money. Or well, else, if they didn't, they just go get an actor that has more of a. You know, well, they always had, they always had Shocker Zegler so and at the industry to get that big new record in the movie, right? Say a new Jaw record or a new Ashanti record. But in today's day and age with the digital, you know what's dope? Uh, who is telling me that they they're grabbing? They'd rather get an independent artist, yeah, you know, and sync and license his music. It's going to cost them less a pop than deal with the labels and all the red tape and all the money they're going to charge them. And then again, with all the movies that are out now. Yeah. There's so much sound they can't grab. They can't pay Ja 40, 50 racks every rack or whatever they, they were charging. Nah, that's a one off. But guess what? They can spend, they could do an independent movie and spend 15 racks in the soundtrack and give the uh, artist 1,500. Yeah. So, you know what I'm saying? Because that's where we're at with the, so many movies. The content, yeah. like you're in almost con us today. Yeah. And I think you're, in the, you're caught up in the same situation where. We're in the business, and well, we're in the film business too, but we're in the business where we don't sell anything. See, when Chris got in the business, I got in the business, our only objective was to motivate you to go to the store and spend $20 cash on a, on a record. If I can make you do that, yeah, yeah. we're crushing, and they have plaques to prove they did it. Yeah. Now, it's not the same. Yeah. I got to get you to spend a few minutes on it. You don't have to listen to the whole song and I get credit for it. Yep. Right? Yeah. A stream. I don't sell anything. I'm giving away. If I told you, hey, we're going to start, tell your mom, mom, let's start a business. What do we do? Oh, by the way, <laughs> we're not selling anything. <laughs> Give away artists. <laughs> we're giving you, giving away music, and guess what? That's how we pay for it. Yeah. But we pay for a streaming service. Right. It's like we pay for Spotify. Or guess what? I can, that same free movie. I want to, I can go to YouTube and watch a, a ton of old school movies. You know what I'm saying? So we, we, that's the area we're in now that you, those are your challenges. Yes, you're going to get the upfront money. You'll get to do with Netflix for the series where you could, but that, 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 it's a stream. Yeah, yeah. And you're going to get paid .00. I don't know what the numbers are for films because the difference between an album and a movie is I'm grabbing my popcorn and I have to sit there and that hour and 25 minutes, yeah. I have to, if I like it, I now, but at minimum, you're getting a half an hour from me. I listen to two records that are whack and I'm done with the album. Right, right. right, right. I'm eight minutes in and I'm over with it. <laughs> if I watch, if I listen to it all, yeah. no, if I listen yeah. to it all, if I listen to two records, yeah. no one sits there and says, hey, grab the popcorn, yeah. let's listen to the album. <laughs> no, they don't do that. They listen song by song. They'll, they'll, but they'll sit down. That's what the difference is. Well, the biggest artists still get that. The yes. biggest artists still get it. People listen. still 
I'm, I agree. No, no, no. You're absolutely right. No, the rest of the rest of this none. Chris, Chris, you're absolutely right, Charm. But even if I listen, Vegas, even if I listen is to Drake's, they get that. Uh, uh, what says Twenty One Savages a product? It's a forty-five minute listen. Yes, they get that. But listen, it's a forty. They get the. It's a forty-five minute it's listen. Yeah, it's true, yeah. but it's a forty-five minute listen. The most, if I'm a hardcore artist, listen to it. I gotta still that those artists. I gotta yeah. sit that hour and a half. Yes. I gotta sit that hour and a half with a movie, even if it's whack or not. Yeah. You get it? Oh, the new boys still up. Oh, I gotta go see it. So that's the attention, and you prepare your day around it. Yeah. Guess Eddie Murphy's dropping a new movie Friday. I did. My boys told my sons told me that because it's coming out on Netflix. Uh, Eddie, Mur Eddie Murphy. Oh, yeah. With, uh, with this kid. With, I forgot the actor, but it drops Friday. Netflix is promoting it's on Netflix. So you're looking at, again, from a marketing standpoint, I'm like, Oh, what's going on? Yeah. COVID killed the movies. Yeah, but yeah. look, you still have big movies. Wakanda, uh, Avatar, oh, Top Gun. Certain things still resonate in the theater. That's interesting. A few of them. But I watched the Emancipation thing, the, the Will Smith movie on Apple TV. Yeah. Incredible. And I said, this is a movie that's worthy. Uh, why didn't they go to... Because they, and they're paying, no, because they need that. Right? So it's like the ones that are going... You can't find them on these streaming platforms. So I'd like to know who's making the decision to say, hey, Perfect. this is, right? This is the, think about it. You have to make a decision now. That's, that's a streaming service. So that's to a streaming service. Yeah, that's not or, or we're going straight to physical where we're lining motherfuckers up and see they show up. Because that's a hard sell now to get me in the theater. <laughs> to sit to drive to the theater, sit in that theater, and for three hours, I can't smoke. I can't smoke, no sweetie. I can't drink. I can't. I I I can pause it at home and take a shit. Yeah, yeah. I can pause the streaming service and say, "Give me a second, stop that phone." Oh, Chris is calling me. Give me stop. What's up? I gotta stop my whole life. That's why movies don't work anymore. Whole life to drive somewhere and go inside a box where they turn the lights off. And watch the screen that I can watch that shit in my house. Yeah. This is what I'm saying. Yeah. That's and now the people that do it have wanna have a nostalgia to me. It's nostalgic now to take your girl to a movie because no one does it. Yeah. So, wow, it's true, but you're yeah. different beast yeah. though. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, I guarantee yeah. you you can't watch a movie like a normal citizen. Oh no, no. Ah and I run into the movies by myself too, so it's not like Hey, yeah. it's hard to watch a movie with me. Because I'll go into say the writing's terrible, I would never wrote that. I and mean, I'm not even writing. <laughs> I'm, just so I'm like, that's Siskel and Ebert. Ew, I'm telling you. You're killing Revan. What's the movie with me? And, it, and it's kind of because we're so into certain things and we're critiquing all the time. <laughs> Siskel and Ebert is probably the first podcast. Is <sighs> podcast. It's crazy how you could put that out. Like, yes. For movies, they was critiquing those movies. Siskel and Ebert, get on TV and kill. Hey, how about this? How about this? Hated it, loved it. Thumbs up, thumbs, thumbs down. <laughs> Now it's about Ron Tomato. The, hey, that was the like on yes, like, yes. that was the early days of it, man. Siskel and Ebert, man. So, so let me. So, would back. you say that the uh, what was that show on BT that had the kid with the dreads and the girl, the kid with the dreads? Oh, that's one six and Paul. I know but it was on BT, right? Yeah, All right, so AJ. That's AJ. Was that the, one of the first hip hop podcasts? That's a podcast. Yeah, think about it. That's a podcast. They come in and talk. You play the yeah. interview people. On senior Hall, Johnny Carson. Those yeah. were all. What are we doing? Look at the table. This is the podcast now. This is our TV. This is the yeah. this is yeah. That's the new. That's that's wow. This is our that's TV crazy. right now. So, we, so the the music transition was a natural inspiration. It was naturally inspired. Yeah. Just yeah. for sure, it was it was definitely something that um I've always like just wanted to do because like in my films I would have like a a, a theme song and I'll write the theme song for it. So like and say it loud, say it loud, y'all, say it loud, y'all. Go and do it like I do. You know what I'm saying? It was just like a little jingle. Yeah. And we put it on iTunes and it made it a ringtone, you know what I'm saying? And then in, in the second film, we had like, uh, it was called Paying the Price. And it's like, for everything you do, you gotta pay the price. I know it's kind of tough, but it's part of life. And it's like, you know, me 16 years old, consequences, for whatever your actions, just for some moments of satisfaction. And then we hire someone, gotta pay the price, y'all. Yeah. Paying the price. You know, it was like one of those situations. So I was like, yo, this is fire. This is something I could do. And so And this it sounds like a movie song. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. felt like it. It felt like it. And I think that was one of the biggest things for me as an artist. Like I'm 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 big on like the the fields of creativity. And if it 
If it feels like it's forced, I don't want it. If it feels like it's not enough. Because you're from the television and inside of things, yeah. do, you, do you ever look at it like going after um, um, like the, the super music supervisors for these TV shows and movies to just create for them directly songs? Like, because that's another big business yeah. in music. Yeah, it That's called License and Sync. That's the License and Sync definitely. part of music that that's, you could just go and idea. they can give you the, the scene because that's what they do. They give you the scene if it's not the entire picture. But, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, if you're not doing the title track, they'll give you a scene and say, we need a something for this. Yeah, long. yeah, yeah, yeah. That will be awesome. That will be awesome. And that that will go back to kind of like my uh, Backyard Again days because we would do something called ADR. And it's something where you, you look at the screen, how like people normally think it goes when you like you're looking at the screen and then you're speaking with it. That that's how the ADR goes. That's kinda of like in our post production. So that would be fire if they had something and it's kinda of like a picture prompt. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I would I would love something like that. If that's like an actual that's, job. Again, that's exactly you just have to get to the music supervisors. Right, right, and they're yeah. out there. Yeah. Um, I let me for sure. Whoever did what what label or or movie house did uh Tyrone uh the moose who did you work for um I'm not even exactly sure it, it was I just know it was through Nickelodeon Nickelodeon that's yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. so Nickelodeon has a music supervisor you should be trying to contact Nickelodeon's music supervisor okay let them know who you are and and it could probably open the door for you it's a different angle different approach but it's very lucrative if you get it done right okay you know yeah um, my man uh Lofi he does all the like the love and hip hop stuff with Mona Scott, okay. all the sounds. And you get into these uh, TV shows, you realize how many cues, that's what they call them, cues is mm-hmm. just music bites is inside of a show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hundreds. Mm-hmm. In a, and this because an hour show, mm-hmm. hundreds of music bites yeah. that they have to pay for, yeah. that if you create. Yeah. And then same thing with so many songs that goes inside of it. So, uh, you know, another guy, Charlie Mack, that I deal with, Charlie was good, uh, you know what I'm saying? He does it also. I could definitely link you with either one of them, sure. and I'd be great. You could kind of create with them and see if there's an opportunity there. Yeah, I, I was just reading because you know Netflix just, you know, was in here something that for all, I just saw, but they just spent nine hundred million buying a piece of the old Fort Dix area to create a mega studio to produce shows in Fort Dix, in Jersey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and and they bought a whole to put movie studios, kind of what this guy did in Atlanta. Uh, Tyler Perry. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Netflix is, again, they're saying, well, let's do that. So I'm just saying, I think that we're in a great space. Mm-hmm. We're in that space also mm-hmm. to create a field. Obviously, you know, music, we create lyrics, we turn into visuals, we music videos. Yeah, I'm going to give it an opportunity to straight down. Yeah, definitely. Straight down uh, the whole movie aspect of it, and you can create the music. But I think because it's such a hugely content creating business yeah. we're doing podcasts. Right, 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 right. Everyone wants to see visuals, so I think that you're right where you're supposed to be. Sure, I think sure. everything, you know, your parents instilled in you, you seem like a great young man. Thank you. And I say that because, you know, which we teach our boys and yeah, we our, our kids our kids about that, and then I noticed that you mentioned your parents so many times. Yeah. Super important you know, when you have that, because unfortunately, unlike you know, Chris, I was telling him he's lucky. I didn't have that. I kind of had to raise myself. But that's why I am the parent I am and active in my kids' lives because I didn't have that. Mm-hmm. And I think when I see that's like, man, that's so awesome. You should need that. You know, parents have no idea how power important parenting is. You know, De Niro always says something that sticks with me with, with himself. He says, I never got a chance to be someone's son. Yeah. And that's crazy. Yeah. You know, yeah. coming from parents, like we both come from parents, imagine yeah. that. Like, I can't. Yeah. You know what I would give to have someone, my pops walk in and say, hey, go get me a towel. That's being somebody's son. Right, right, right. Go get me the keys to the car. Yeah. Do you know how I felt? Take out the car. seen the in the documentary, you guys bought your dad that, was it a caddy? Caddy. Because I know what caddies meant. Yeah. A caddy was you know, for Rock. Crazy for us. <laughs> 70s or the 80s, caddy was the for Rock. You know, in his, in, so for him, that was the epitome of being at the top. Of course. he had, We asked him anything he wanted, anything he could want, any kind, just name it. And he said, man, I wish I had a can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> people to understand what Cadillac, so Cadillac was the first <laughs> luxury brand in yeah. the world. Yeah. And it was an American made car. Yeah, yeah, so was that was, you know, For that him, that was the epitome. That and the Lincoln Continental yeah, yeah, yeah. when it was black back yeah. then. But when I see those things, yeah. 
that's part of being a son or to say, hey, I'm I'm giving you something that I know you always wanted that you could right. get, but thank you for being in my life. I'm able to achieve it. I, could, I never had a chance to do that, right? You know what I'm saying? So but to me, and when I see my, I don't know how to take it when my kids try to show me, I, I'm like, I don't know how to see, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's weird. Right, right, right. <laughs> like, what are you thinking me for? That's what I'm supposed to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy. And when I tell my kids the stories of, so I, you know, I was telling pretty soon the day the story of, the irony of this is like, you're a great parent. They love you. But I, I know in, in, in my Jose's grandfather was a rolling stone. Yeah. My boy was a roll. Wherever he lay, he lay his hat was his home. <laughs> That's right. He had like nine, ten kids, blah, blah, blah. Laid all around. But he, I heard stories. He was the guy who would show up and be like, uh, hey, dad, my prom, his daughter's mad. My prom is next. Yeah, no problem. Have your mom set it up the day. You know, usually pay the prom two days. Two days he can't find him. Gone. He said yes to everything, but he's not showing up to nothing, right? Uh -huh. But when he died, everybody was there crying, laughing. Now they're all damaged because of that, right? So then I said, damn, I thought no one would show up to this guy's thing. <laughs> everybody was talking about it. The wanting. Even when you don't have a good parent, the wanting them to be there, like it's a crazy connection that I seen, right? And then I seen, you know, when you it was during the COVID, but when your pops passed away, yeah, the amount of people. Okay. What I tell you was my lifelong goal. Yeah, when I tell you, be like that. I want to be like, be like his dad. When I seen him, big tall, sitting there, he had his hair, all his grandkids, his kids, and he's always smiling, chilling, yeah. always respectful, like. That's what I want. I want to be able to see the fruits of my labor, mm -hmm. in, in a sense. And, and I'm pretty sure he was. He's not even. He wasn't aware of what he was going to create. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, but the, just I see he's left. It just happened. Him just being present. Yes. You know, you and it's so important to be present. And when I see if I just I look back on mine, I say, damn. But I'm okay with that. everyone has their 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 shit in life. Mm -hmm. I'm being present for my kids. But yes. you know, again, man, I commend you, and and I would definitely. Hopefully we can work together as we go forward, you know, in the future. Great. Is there any other topics you would want to touch on before we wrap up this interview? Oh, um, I think it's uh I think this was a good interview and we talked about a lot of things. I think the last thing I would like to bring up and kinda of goes into the whole parents thing is like my mom has dementia right now. And um it's kinda of been How old is she if you know she's fifty nine. Oh she's young. Yeah, she's oh, this is the full this is the full and, um wow. it's like a rare disease. Like, and it, it's so crazy because, like, over, like, the last couple of, like... Are you studying this disease? Yeah, I, I have been studying a lot, you know. B12, walnuts, exercise, like, really. Coconut oil, um, avocados. Generally, like avocados. Got it. I know. It. Put it on a regimen. Yeah, it's tough. With tough. You know, that's, well, you know there's tough. some medicines that taste worse, so that's how you would have to... You, you you have to end up being the parent now. It's crazy. Right, right, right. That's what that's the, the the irony that's of life, the, right? That I was gonna get to. I mean, if, and I know, I know what I'm talking talk about. about okay, because like this is something that I feel like a lot of people are going through. That yes, really no one talks about. Yeah, it. it was like like I my mom. You know, everybody loves my mom. She was a great person. She is a great person. I feel like she's just trapped in her own body and her own thoughts, and like it's progressing really bad to the point where like she lost weight. She, she can't speak. Does she remember things? She does remember things. And like when she sees people, she'll remember the person. Man. My attorney died. Really? Yeah. I'm oh, sorry to hear that. Gerald Shaw Gill. Yeah. Oh. Best, best attorney in the game. But why isn't she eating? Is it is it something where you forget to eat? Like I'm just trying to figure. I don't know as much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. Because when you're saying that, I'm like. Yeah, she. It, like there's some things that she don't want to eat. Like I, I, when it goes back to diet, like my mom was like a candy person. You know what I'm saying? She likes sweets when she's a about yeah. When she's she diabetic, like younger, uh, she was borderline diabetic, and then she she became diabetic. The diet on just did it, but it, it was just like that, one of the that, that speeds it up, right? Yeah. Okay, again, I studied a lot about it. It's that yeah, the diabetes, um, the sugar, mm -hmm. it it blocks. It's a blocker. So. People don't die from diabetes. People die from other things yeah. that diabetes causes, causes I guess. So, mm -hmm. so the the sugar thickens that blood and creates blocking. Yeah. You know, just think of a sugar. If you yeah. just sat in your house, it gets yeah. syrupy and it's sticky and everything. Sure. Well, that's when it's going to your blood. For sure. And that's sure. why, again, um, natural uncloggers is uh, avocado. avocado, 
coconut oil. These are two natural uncloggers. Um, almonds. Almonds. Almonds is good for the heart, and and the walnuts is also good for the, for the brain because you when you're talking dementia, it's like you have clogged brain. Yeah, 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 yeah. So your memory and things you're losing is because of the clogs that's got being created, and it's typical because it's what you're eating. So it's the sugars that's sweet. Yeah, the sweets killed her. Um, she has to go hard, 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 green, mm-hmm. all natural. I would keep her away from all medicines. I know the doctor's probably prescribing all types. Yeah. And it's hard to say that, and I don't want to, I'm sitting there, I'm knock on wood, and God bless you, but you know, but the reality is those, all those medicines create other problems inside your blood. Worse. And that's the, that is the worst part. But if she, The side effects of those you know, medicines. You know, I'm very big in holistic. I have a holistic doctor. I would, if you want to talk to, I could definitely would recommend you talk so, to. Just talking to, her. she's amazing. Yes, um, she's amazing, and she's so. Uh, let's say she trained under Savi, Doctor Savi. Mm-hmm. I know Doctor Savi's wife because of her. We've created different businesses. I've helped so many people through her. I promise you, she would have an effect. Yeah. And I'm saying, if it's how far it is, I don't know. Mm-hmm. So I'm just saying, but. She she goes to the extent where she would actually come and live with your mother and cook for her and make sure she eats and nothing's going wrong. That's how far she's done. Interesting. And she's done that. She's yeah. done that for multiple clients, wow. um, and it's been very successful. That's amazing. Um, yeah, it is amazing. It's great work. It is amazing. And again, the hardest part for her yeah. is getting the organic roots and things that she has to get. Because America, she tells you our soil is not there. Like, so we have to get it from other countries with their soil is rich to get the right nutrient or whatever is in those roots and the flowers. Because that's what it is. It's really some bullshit. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then getting roots and cooking it and all of this. And then they just try to do this, do that. And then she's cooking all organic, natural food. Um, and cooks for you, you know, because it's we are what we eat. If if someone told you you eat those cookies, it's gonna kill you. You probably wouldn't, but no one ever yeah, said it. We we was taught, we was raised that that's a good cookie. Give me that damn cookie. But really, that's what's killing us is those kind of things. It's eating twenty seven cookies a day. Well, you know, when it tastes good, it's hard to put a number on what you when you're gonna stop. We're we're bliss. We like bliss. That's the thing in the true. I'm trying to up. Like at one point get over trying to take care of your health and realize that you only live once. Okay, so here's the reality. I'm dealing with my mother who's 89. Mm-hmm. I'm going to pick her up tonight. Oh, she has, uh, she has shown mm-hmm. early signs mm-hmm. of dementia. Mm-hmm. Very sad. Yeah. Um, This is a vibrant, strong right. woman, I mean, strong. And to watch her forget things, or, which is not in her character, yeah, yeah, yeah. she's she's involved. She had eight kids, and she's involved in all our kids and our grandkids and you know great grandkids' lives. She knows everything what's going on, and then she'll forget certain little things. So it's early stage. She's really I'm not gonna what she's blessed. Don't get me wrong, uh, awesome. but I'm I'm involved with dementia because of that. I watch um, very early stages with my pops before, but he passed from cancer, so it was different. But we definitely got him from being a diabetic yeah. in his 80s. No more diabetes. Yeah. Yeah. And it was because I converted him. I, I, I will never forget the day he's, my boy Charles, shout out Charles and Craze Vegan. He's smelling Charles' food. Charles is a vegan, he cook, chef, Craze Vegan, and he's sitting there smelling and he looks up at me and he says, Boy, I never thought at 80, 82 I'd be a vegan. I wouldn't be eating meat anymore. <laughs> and liking it. Yeah. Like he's smelling it and liking it. And it was like, man, this is amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you talk about living, right? And you talk about life. And I watched the last two years of that man's life. He died in 86. The last two years of his life was very rough, but it was from cancer. So when I look at life, for every one of us, it's one thing. It's quality of life. And I'm telling my mother, it's quality life. Stop eating those cookies. Stop eating those ice cream. 
stop it. You did it. Think of it this way instead of thinking, because my mother's saying is, I did it this long. Why am I stopping now? My pops used to say the same thing. Like, and then she would even go and say, you might be lucky if you could make 89. And I'm like, you're right. I'll take it right now. I'll sign off on it right now. <laughs> yeah, there was a contract yeah, I signed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> what, did we write? And then I'm sitting there saying, no problem. But I said, but I said, Ma, don't look at it that way. Let's flip it. Look at it like I want to live the last years quality wise instead of keep doing what you're right. doing because it's going to probably have an effect on the, the way you live your last years. Not so much as, you know, what you did your whole life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But now it's it, okay. And I don't think you could reverse it mm-hmm. in that amount because it's damaged. So much damage is right, done right. and your body's not the same. You're 89. Mm-hmm. Even though she went to the doctor, the doctor's amazed and said she's doing great. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, right. I look at life like that. I look at it about you know, people came up to me, Amado just came and said, man, you lost weight. And I said, I'm just living better. I'm living a better quality of life. Stop eating all that junk. And they, yeah, don't get me wrong, I still cheat. But it's nothing like it was. Yeah. And I'm very mindful. I had my juices this morning. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm i very mindful of what I'm putting in my body. You we only get one. Yeah. We only get one body, and we better take care of it because I want to have the best quality of life when I get older. I tell my kids, I said, when you when I get to that part, you go, who's changing my diaper? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what happens. Yeah. I think everything that's being talked about at the end of the day comes back down to mental health, right? Think how you mentally think and how you using to Chris speak. He's mentally, you know, and there's a word called discipline. You have to be disciplined yes. to do certain things. But you know, mental health is really the key to everything, because if you mentally feel a certain way, then you can make those changes. And you know, we're all searching for a healthy lifestyle, but I know probably a ton of people who are physically, you know, look at these athletes. Nobody's better physically than them, but you walk into their lives and mentally they're fucking shot sure. how they're living, right? You know, they're living foul or they're doing things they're not supposed to or they're living double lives or whatever. So I think that it comes down to, um, you know, to me, everything comes down to mental health. How are you constantly thinking about yourself? You know, if you're overweight, there's no way you can look in the mirror and feel good about yourself. Yeah, we mask it and uh, heavier people have a better personality and all that bullshit, right? At the end of the day, you know that there's a problem as to why you're big, right? There's a discipline aspect, and that makes the, there's no way you can look in the mirror, and I'm not saying that. I'm saying like you're going to feel a certain way about yourself. How you look in the mirror and who you, if you don't like that person, you might not, you might be physically fit, but you know you're, you're a scumbag. You're yeah, yeah. doing things out there. You can't lie to that person in the mirror. So I think that that balance of mental health, physical, you know, spiritually, what do you believe in? How many people are you? know, there's a balance. So I, you know, when Chris says, I 100% agree with him. Yeah, eating and that is one, one, one thousand percent. You know, we're in our 50s right now. We're blessed. You know, his mom's is in it. It was about to be 90. Yes. What they put in their in their stomach when they were our age is totally different than what people are eating today. That's what I told them. I agree with you 1,000%. I told her, uh, I, I told I, her. Chris and I, because now, that's, that's why a, more reason why she can't keep work out. Saying. You know why I work out? Two things. I work out because as men, I think lifting and doing that, you need that, you need to let that out, right? Mm-hmm. If you're, you know, but also, I want to be able to eat that fucking cookie. Yeah, word. Not every day. Because I want to be able, you get what I'm saying, Chris? Like right now, you bring a cookie. Now, You'll never see us traveling. I learned a lot. I eat a lot healthier with him. We do a lot of intermittent fasting. We do things. But again, I work out so I could eat that one or two cookies there. But Don't I'm not to. taking no cookies. I that piece up. Like today, I can have a cheat day because you're, but you're aware of it. Some people, yeah. they wake up in the morning, yeah. pancakes, yeah. eggs, bacon, yeah. McDonald's in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. And they're not even aware yeah. of how they're eating. Yeah. And that's where the situation we're in today. Man. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the dementia is right. sad, man. You yeah, gotta. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish you all the best with you. I definitely, yeah. definitely. And she's young; she could strong enough to fight still. Yeah, yeah it would be amazing. Yeah. But we're all given challenges, my brother. Right. You know, and, and one of the things Chris knows in my book and the stuff that I write about in life is like, you don't get here to come to this planet and, and just laugh and sing all fucking day. Well, you came here to create, which we're all doing, and you came here to feel. Came me to feel sad. You came me to feel that desperation of what's gonna happen with my mom. Right. You came me to feel like what's gonna happen with my career. I know if I keep doing this, am I gonna get my big break that I'm looking right? right, they, right, right. 
Hey, exactly. Guess what? You see this OG right here? And Chris, we're looking for a big break too. We're constantly <laughs> looking for something big to happen with this podcast, right? Even though we've accomplished things. In the game of life, you're only as good as your next fucking move. Case closed. You know, Earth could have sat back and said, hey, I'm Earth God, he's murdering. He's like, nah, I'm going into tales, I'm doing this. He's, Chris, we could have sat down, he created Advent to Music, we're doing the podcast. You're only as good as your next move, and I will tell you that as you go forward in your life. You're going to be hit with trials and tribulations, whether it's your parents, whether it's your siblings, right, whether it's your, your friends, right, they're going through stuff. Everyone's going through something. That's why you have to be kind. That's why you have to, how many people can you help? Because at the end of the day, whether you live... You know, whether you, you're 22 and you die in a car accident or you're 95 and you die in bed, sleeping with cancer, life is a tragedy. And I tell Chris, the only purpose you should have in life is, is someone going to hang a picture of me when I die in their house? Do you have enough influence? Yeah, if you end up on their wall. To, ah. Yeah. You know why? You know, if you notice in, in back in, in time, you know, and I'm not going to say the white man, but they've had the most power. They create these bronze statues. And we would never say why. What's, why create a statue of yourself? So they could remember you were here. That's why the, 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 the twist of those statues they were building in the South after the Civil War was a remembrance of, that's why they said take them down. Yeah. They're not celebrating people who did great things. They're celebrating slave owners and they're, it's a reminder of we, we owned you. Mm -hmm. That's why they took them down. But, but we, people didn't realize. And so they fought to keep them of up. Of course, keep them up. To keep the history of what we <laughs> did. They fought so, to keep them up. And that's why they built a statue of, of Michael Jordan in front of this, you know, to keep that legacy going. So at the end of the day, your life, how many people have you inspired, touched, and are they willing to hang a picture of you? If you did that, you lived an incredible life. You know, we're blessed. Where they're going to keep, I think they're singing my records, Chris, the movies and the stuff they've done, you yourself, you have these things. But the average person that's listening to us, that's not gonna have a podcast. The message to them is, hey, one person that you helped that will hang a picture, your life was successful on this planet. That's it. Bottle of breath. Well, man, I wanna thank you for coming in. Uh, thank you for having me. I wanna wish your, your, your mom all the best. Yeah, you say a prayer for yeah. us. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Don De Niro for being here. You know what I'm saying? This is Chris Gotti Lorenzo, and we are giving you the business. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.